Hey, how's it going? Today I'm talking about what taking a break from running for two weeks actually does to you. This is Running to the Castle, a podcast for injury-prone Run Disney runners on a journey to running magical miles. Join me, Dr. Allie, as I share the secrets I've gathered as a runner, doctor of physical therapy, and coach. You'll learn the exact ways I get my clients to the castle strong without feeling broken or held together with KT tape as they cross the finish line. So the other day I answered a question asking, can I jump right back into my long run after taking two weeks off? And so go back and listen to that one if you haven't listened to it yet, because I discuss what my recommendation is and why doctors and other healthcare providers will say rest for two weeks. So taking a break from running for two weeks is one of the most common things, if not the most common thing. As I was saying that, I was like, "Mm, maybe it is the most common. Anyway, one of the most common things that doctors and healthcare providers will say because If something is going to, if an injury that has inflammation and pain is going to take care of itself without other intervention, without treatment, it's going to do it in the first 10 to 14 days. That's what happens with acute injuries. That's why when you first get hurt, it just, or not necessarily hurt, but feel the pain. When you first start feeling the pain, And you're like, ooh, yeah, that's annoying. And I'm just going to like see if it goes away before I go see a doctor. And it does. It goes away in the first two weeks, sometimes super fast. Sometimes it takes the whole two weeks. And that's because that's how our inflammatory process works. That's what happens on the inside of our body. That's what happens when you get a cut. It's what happens when you have micro tearing in tendons. And so if injury that has happened, whatever your body is perceiving as an injury, whether it be a bad injury or not, it starts the inflammatory process. Your brain sends a signal to your mast cells, M-A-S-T, mast cells, which start a histamine reaction. So things get red, hot, and swollen temporarily. Things get swollen because your body is bringing fluid in, fluid with water and white blood cells and other fluid with water and healing cells in your body the the different types of cells that help the healing process and they start doing their job and if it's manageable by your body it takes up to two weeks for that pain and inflammation to go away if the injury is more severe the body still starts that process but it can't complete it. It can't do it without other assistance. Sometimes the inflammatory reaction gets out of control. So somebody who has an autoimmune disease or is currently battling an illness, whether it be a cold or the flu, COVID, you know, whatever kind of illness it may be, if your body doesn't have all the resources to heal, it takes longer. And the more often this happens, the longer it takes for the body to do the healing because it needs a little bit more resources every time a flare-up happens. So resources can be the mast cells doing their job properly, the signal from your brain to the lymphatic system to take care of the injury. It also means the actual building blocks to repair the thing. So amino acids from protein and collagen and and things like that to do the healing process. So that's why a new problem lasts only a week or two because your body could handle it by itself. And when it handled it, it doesn't necessarily go away completely. Like micro tearing in a tendon takes six weeks to heal when it's a minor 
micro tearing. So the first two weeks, the inflammatory process has started and it brings the inflammation low enough that the pain goes away so you don't feel it anymore. And then maybe you took two weeks off as a break from running because your doctor told you to or the internet told you to or you just know that you've heard it enough, take two weeks off, and then when you have no pain, go back to running. Well, micro tearing, the natural healing process is six weeks. So we've only done two weeks and now we're jumping right back into our training plan. Well, there's still four more weeks of healing to go. So they've started the repair process. Your body has started the repair process, but it hasn't finished it because it hasn't been enough time. It just, it takes six weeks in order for the new cells to populate, for the, the scar tissue to go down, and for the new cells to take effect and everything kind of bind together, for lack of a better term. When we're talking tendons, we, we need everything to, to fill in those gaps. And so first, the inflammatory process happens. It brings all of the resources and it helps manage the inflammation. So the managed inflammation, the inflammation comes down to sub-pain threshold. That happens in the first two weeks. While that's happening, scar tissue is starting to form. That scar tissue, think of it like a scab on your skin when you get a cut. That's You can literally see this process that I'm talking about when you have a cut on your arm, let's say. A scab forms, and then as you do gentle movement, gentle strengthening, and gentle getting back to the activities, you start pushing and pulling those muscle fibers so the scar tissue starts breaking up and it's replaced with the replacement tissue of the tendon fibers. If you go too hard, that scar tissue just breaks because it has been pulled too far that it didn't just start coming off you picked the whole scab off and now you have a gaping wound again. Instead, do some gentle movement, you push and you pull and a little bit of the scab falls off, but that scab has already started having the new tendon be put down underneath it. And since you only let some of that scab off, it doesn't, it's not a big deal. It's just, a, you know, the edge of the scab has come up but it was replaced with tendon fibers. And then the next day you push and you prod a little bit gently. And so a little bit more of that scab falls off, but it's okay because the little bit has been replaced with the new tendon fibers. And you do this for the next four weeks to make a total of six weeks. And now you have brand new muscle tendon fibers taking up where the tear was, which was broken old muscle tendon, and now, now you're better. They are new tendon fibers, so they're weak, so now you need to build up this, continue to build up the strength. So that's why you don't just jump right back into, two, uh, into your training plan after two weeks of rest, because if it's a tendon issue, it takes another four weeks to heal and you are disrupting the process. And every time that process is disrupted, it starts all over again and adds a little bit more time because now your body is going to really try and put all that stuff down, the new cells down to make sure it doesn't get torn again. And so it will take longer this time. So I... I recommend when somebody has a pain, yes, pain is your body's way of telling you not this, not right now. So should you continue running through that pain? No, you shouldn't. But you get to decide how much pain is okay. You know your body. Use professional, use professionals to help make that judgment if you're not sure. But ultimately, you do get to decide. However, this is also one of the things that I help my clients go through the healing process so that they don't disrupt that healing time. 
and I've seen it over and over and over and over again, starting as a physical therapist, not with runners, but just with general orthopedic injuries, mainly knees, knee arthritis, meniscus problems, um, patellar tracking issues, knee replacements, ACL surgeries, meniscus surgeries. I watched the healing process and I watched what was too much and what wasn't enough. And the people who do just enough, they find the Goldilocks situation, they heal the fastest. People who go too far and do too much, they end up having to do damage control for another four to six weeks. And somebody who doesn't do enough, they are slow in progression and they have other problems that happen because of not doing enough. But, and you, and so it's, it's, it's a fine balance of finding that Goldilocks of what's enough and what's, but still not too much. And so now in runners, seeing that 80% of running injuries are from overuse, which means there's likely some micro tearing, micro fracturing happening. So micro fracturing, if we're talking stress fracture, micro tearing, if we're talking tendon, and those problems tend to be a little bit of a, a, a little niggle here and there. It's annoying. I know it doesn't feel quite normal, but it's really not pain. It doesn't bug me all the time. It's not always there. But then it progresses and gets worse and worse and worse. And it usually starts happening after you've been training for about six weeks, give or take. As little as four, as much as eight. It's usually like that six week timeline where it's like you're building, you're building, you're building, you're feeling really good. Oh my God, look at all of these miles I'm adding on. And then boom, can't go up and down the stairs. Can't run more than half a mile. Your knee is just aching sitting there, feeling like you have to constantly shift and move around, cannot get comfortable during the day. And you're like, what gives? I was doing so good for about six weeks. Well, that's, that's a muscle or a tendon issue. That's what happens. You built up over time and your body couldn't keep up with managing the buildup, the breakdown, the buildup, the breakdown, and managing little bits of, uh, small little bit of inflammation after each run. And it was just building on top of each other. And so you take two weeks off because the doctor said that, and I don't recommend it. What I recommend instead is instead of taking two full weeks off, yeah, take a day or two off. And then maybe instead of running, you're going for a walk or you're going for a bike ride. You're doing your cross training that feels comfortable, doesn't cause you pain so that you can continue to add stress and load. Because what happens is when you take two full weeks off, Yes, your body is doing its thing and handling the inflammation and the pain. But when it's an overuse injury, now you've taken load, pressure, stress, load off of your tendon. Lifted it off completely. And so now your body that has now started the repair process on those tendons, those new tendon fibers they can't tolerate any load because they haven't had any load on them. So you haven't progressively added just a little bit more. I compare this to having a stomach bug. Okay, your stomach is upset. When you get an upset stomach, you don't just stop eating for two weeks. You modify how much and what you're eating. So why can't it be the same for pain with running? So whenever I eat something that upsets my stomach, which doesn't happen very often, I don't have a super sensitive stomach. I'm a picky eater. Uh, there are things that I won't touch, but I don't have a super sensitive stomach. When I have a sensitive stomach or when I have 
uh, an upset stomach, I should say, you know, yeah, maybe I don't eat for a day or two, let things calm down because sometimes everything's just coming back up. If it goes on long enough, I might call my doctor. My doctor always has the same recommendation. Eat small amounts of bland food. Nothing spicy, nothing heavy, no dairy products, no cheeses, no ice cream. Make it bland, bananas, applesauce, saltines, and eat a little bit and eat a little bit more each day. And if I ignore that advice and I just decide to go eat some ice cream or I decide to go eat a whole chicken and french fry meal, well, all of that is coming back up because my stomach wasn't ready for it. But if I eat a corner of a saltine and then 15 minutes later I eat another corner of a saltine and then 15 minutes later I eat another corner of saltine and then 15 minutes later I've finished one saltine cracker in an hour. And then maybe the next time I do it, I can eat two corners every 15 minutes. And then a couple hours later, I can eat three corners every 15 minutes. And before you know it, I can eat one whole cracker in the 15 minutes. But if I go too much too soon, it's not going to work for me. It's going to overload my stomach. My stomach is not going to like it. But if I take small bites, small amounts, and push it out over the course of an hour, my stomach can tolerate it much better. Same thing with getting back to running after taking a couple of days off. Don't take two weeks off. You do a little bit. Okay, well maybe you walk to the mailbox and back. Okay, well now you're gonna just walk three houses down and back. Okay, now you're gonna walk six houses down and back. And you progressively add a little bit more. You know, and, and maybe I'm just going too light here with how literal I am with how far you're walking. I don't know how far away your houses are. Living here in Vegas are houses you can practically touch each other's walls from my house to my neighbor's house. My parents' house growing up, all of the homes are mm, quarter mile to half mile apart. So it all depends on where you live, what part of the country, are you in the country, are you in the city? But so don't take that literally, but build up back slowly, incorporating cross training, walking, biking, elliptical machine, things like that to make up the difference. The things that don't irritate and bug your knee, do those things to keep your endurance up so that you don't lose out on your stamina, you don't lose your breath when you have to slowly build back up from having knee problems and don't take a full two week break. Instead of complete rest, we're doing active rest. So you're avoiding the painful problem, but you're still loading your tendons because the new tendon needs to be able to tolerate load so that it can continue to heal and not cause more problems. If you are looking to know how to train between wine and dine and marathon weekend, I invite you to the how to train between races, wine and dine to marathon weekend. It's a free training I'm putting on October 24th. Register at the link in the show notes. As always, thanks so much for listening. That's all for now. Talk to you soon.